All right, guys, we're joined by Tough One UFC legend and AKA Thailand owner Mike Quick Swick, who's here to support Mark Hunt as he takes on Bigfoot Silver at UFC 193. Mike, we've always been meaning to ask you oh, the nickname Quick. Does it put pressure on you when you want to take your time doing something and people are like, come on, you're supposed to be Quick Swick. What's going on? Hurry sometimes, up. Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it does. You're but, at the uh, grocery store. You know, yeah, you're choosing yeah. your cereal. Yeah. They're like, quick swick, what's up? Move, on, move it, along it, here. It gets said too much, <laughs> too much for sure. But no, it's cool. It, it helped with the, the last name because after Ultimate Fighter, people couldn't figure out my last name. So What did they, what was it? What did they pronounce They like? would just come up and be like, man, I'm your biggest fan, Mike Swack. I, I love you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? And so once the quick rhymed with swick, it was like, then it was better. Then they could say swick finally. So I, I definitely like the fact that that happened. So thanks, uh, Mike Goldberg and Joe Rogan for that. <laughs> They're great, guys. That's when the doors started opening. Now, we haven't had a chance to speak to you since you retired. That was obviously very big news recently. Just give us an update. How's retired life? We imagine a lot of, uh, a lot of golf, a lot of early bird dinner specials. How's retired life? Yeah, a little golf. Uh, you know, it, it, my work has just begun. I mean, you know, the project with AK Thailand is, is my dream, you know, for a long time. And what we're doing now is bigger than anything I've ever done in my career. So being here with Mark Hunt, you know, su radio. Su supporting his uh, fight camp, doing interviews with uh, groups like you guys, Submission Radio. And uh, it's, it's just it's amazing, you know, to take that next step and, and help kind of give these other guys you know launch these other guys careers like these up-and-coming guys that we have and then help guys that are legends like mark hunt and and give them fight camps and help them do what they want to do so it's just so much bigger than what i've done and, and i'm very happy where i'm at very very content we have to ask because obviously you're around these guys training with them doing all the stuff any itch to get back in there or is it 100 percent done retirement we'll never see mike swick in there or is there is there that little itch there is always an itch you know yeah. but when i fought my last fight being that I was out so long and stuff, I wasn't near as comfortable. So it's like, I feel like the the fight, as far as at that level of UFC level is left, you know, yeah. I, I can't compete at that level um, how I want to, unless I'm 100% dedicated and I can't be. And that's a problem. I, I tell all my guys the same thing. It's, it's like, you have to be all in or all out, you know, like you can't have one foot in the door, you know, as my buddy Luke always says, but uh, you have to be all in and, and I'm not, you know, I've sacrificed so much for so long to, to be able to sustain my career in the UFC and, and, and win those fights and, and stay there so long. And now it's about AK Thailand and my family, you know, and, and everything else. Like I said, I've sacrificed my family a lot over the years. So it, it's time to, to work in business and, and help other people achieve their dreams and not get punched in the face. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know Mark Hunt's been enjoying the warm weather and all the monkey trips in AK Thailand. Just tell us, do you remember how Mark Hunt first got involved with you guys? Did he reach out to you? Did you reach out to him? How did it all come together? He came in to help uh, Soa get ready for his, his last fight camp. Um, I was working on my fight camp, so I couldn't, I couldn't be in the gym as much. And Soa brought a lot of guys in. Mark Hunt was one of them. Uh, he liked the gym, he liked the curriculum, and, and wanted to come to a fight camp, and and we talked, and uh, next thing you know, he was doing his full fight camp with us, so worked out really good. I never expected Mark Hunt would do a fight camp at, at my gym in Thailand, you know, back when I was in high school, and watching him fight K1, and, and all these kickboxing fights, and, and pride, and stuff like that, so it's it's been an amazing experience for me. Yeah, people don't know this about Mark Hunt, but he can actually be pretty funny, he likes to crack a few jokes, especially yeah. if you get to know him. What's this camp been like leading into UFC 193? How's it gone so far? Good, really good. Uh, as far as the jokes, it's not just him, his whole crew. I mean, yeah. it, he brought Bit in... of that Kiwi humor. Have you, have yeah. you caught on to it yet? I, yeah, pretty much. It, it's different and uh, it's awesome. You know, these guys bring a lot of uh, humor and just, just good times to the camp. You know, he has a great group around him and they all come in together. And, you know, we have a big family at AKA, so we just mesh really well, you know, and it's just been a great camp. You know, he's trained really hard. We have a real hard curriculum at AKA. It's not really fit for everyone as mm -hmm. far as the fighters at that level. Um, not a lot of fighters can handle that type of training. And, and he, he did, man, he, he, he trained like a warrior and, and he's in great shape. Just to deviate for a second from Mark Hunt's training, he released his book during the fight camp, obviously. Some pretty crazy stuff. He's lived yeah. a very tough life. You know, have you had a chance to read much of the book? And, you know, what do you think about some of the things that, you know, you may have read? So I'm, I'm right at around 110, page 110 on the book. So I got to read it on the way here, every chance I got. Um, running the gym, I'm so busy. It's like I've been looking at fight tapes and videos and strategizing. Monkeys. 
monkeys holding you up to the water <laughs> yeah and like you know running the gym and then also the camps we got a lot of guys in fight camp including mark obviously but i had a chance to read uh, 110 pages or so here and it's it's fantastic i mean it's it's a rough story but but so intriguing and like it really it shows you the life he's been through and like how hard growing up was for him and it's cool now meeting some of these guys from the book and I want to keep reading tonight. I'm going to like stay in and like read more of it because I want to know more about these guys that I'm meeting, like his son Caleb and Lolo and like some of these other the characters in the book that that helped form his life, you know. And now I'm actually meeting them and and I want to know kind of the full story. After reading the book, do you have a sort of newfound respect for everything that he's been able to accomplish because mm-hmm. he's lived like a super tough life? And I think you're still pretty early in the book, but later on, I don't want to spoil things for you but for a lot of fights that he had he talked about how he smoked and drank went out the night before sometimes he actually drank right up to the fights that he had and he was able to achieve what he was able to achieve i mean does that blow your mind like blue armor it does you know yeah and uh you know but he but he's also moved on past a lot of that stuff and and so that's that's where a lot of the respect grew you know he's 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 moved on and, and done a lot better. And, you know, the thing is, is like when he trains in Thailand, we live such a clean lifestyle there that he's right on, you know, he's right on the, the whole time. I mean, he's eating good. He's training good. So I think it's just an overall a good environment for him. Um, but either way, he, he, he gives us all, man. He's a warrior. And like, yeah, it's, it's hard to believe that he did any of those things. But, you know, given the childhood he had and his upbringing, it's amazing he's accomplished what he has. And it's amazing that he's such a nice and cool guy. And, like, it didn't affect him in that way where he, he changed his personality to something that was negative or, or you know, bully-like or whatever. He's, he's a super cool guy. He's looking very slim this time around, especially in contrast to his last fight against Stipe where he barely made the weight. Just tell us how hard has he been working to keep that weight off or get that weight off? And is this the best in shape Mark Hunt that we'll potentially have ever seen? I don't know. You know, I don't know how, how good a shape he's been in his past. He's been in good shape for fights for sure. You know, he's had a good camp behind him uh, before he came to us. But I think, you know, maybe his mind was in different places or maybe he had different motivations. Um, but after that last fight, I think it, it definitely changed things. And, and he wanted to make a statement. And so I'm just so fortunate that he came to our gym and, and wanted to use our gym to help make that statement because mm-hmm. we were ready for it. We were ready to put him through the training that he wanted to do, which was really hard training and get in really good shape. But I think it was just that transition in his mind that, that he was ready to come back from that. He didn't want to go down like that. He didn't want to look like that. So he, he's going out there to make a statement. And I think he's going to shock a lot of people here. Yeah, me and Cass, we were in Adelaide. We were cage side for that fight. I mean, just an absolute brutal fight to watch. Yeah. At parts, we wanted the referee to stop it. At parts, we wanted hoping the corner was going to stop it. What went through your mind? You were sitting at home probably watching it when you saw a fight like that. It's tough, man. You know, it's like he's... he's... Did you want him to sort of maybe even throw in the towel in a lot of ways to avoid some of the damage that he ended up taking later yeah, on in that fight? You don't want to see someone take damage like that, you know, yeah. obviously. And now I know him a lot more, you know, and, and care about him. And it's like... It's tough, man. It's tough because he's such a true fighter, and, and and for him, he'll never quit. So he's gonna battle through everything, you know. So it, then then it becomes up to the corner, and then they got to figure out what they want to do. And is it, you know, they don't want to, you know, it's a tough decision. But yeah, no one wants to see someone take damage. And uh, I I think the the one good thing that came out of it is that that it motivated him and a motivated in shape mark hunt is a very very dangerous person and from what i've seen in this fight camp man he is going to be an absolute monster i mean he is we have the biggest guys at ak thailand we have two uh iranian guys one's a two-time greco roman world champion one's a freestyle champion uh all his guys came in so came in we have monsters there it's like the the set of 300 <laughs> and he's just like knocking them down like we're at the end of the camp we're having like uh four or five guys in one round you know going in a minute on him hard wow. as you know pretty hard as they can and he's having to just tolerate 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 and he's handled like a champ i mean he, he really is fantastic right now in the last fight, Bigfoot Silver, he got on top of him. He ran down with big punches. I believe he was in mount. You know, and we saw in the last fight against Stipe Mircic, you know, a lot of Mark Hunt's escapes that were largely ineffective. How much have you guys trained the ground game? Obviously not just standing, uh, you know, just in case Bigfoot gets on top and, you know, as far as any escapes or anything like that. Yeah, we worked some escapes and, and, and obviously some, some controlling stuff. We don't want to go into too much details. but You don't want to give us the game plan? Yeah. <laughs> you can give it to us. We won't tell anyone. It is to knock uh, Silva out. I'll say yeah, that. Okay. But 
the the thing is is we did a lot of specific stuff for this fight you know whatever we can add you know what i mean like mark hunt's mark hunt and he's always been mark hunt so he, he has his style of fighting that i'm not going to change you know I mean, i'm going to give him what insight i have but it's again me and mark hunt you know it's like the guy that i i watched out of high school you know who was like knocking guys out in hundred thousand st seat stadiums <laughs> You know, and I've already had my full career. I've already retired, and now he's at my gym, and, and we're training him for a fight. Um, so I can only give him so much advice, but there was definitely a lot we could add, and we worked on repetitively, like specifically for this fight. We didn't waste any time doing anything that, that wasn't going to be useful for the fight. And one thing I think we do do well over there is strategize, and, and we study our opponents, and uh, I, I think we have a real good way of, of, of dealing with anything that uh, Bigfoot Silva has. Is that, I just want to touch on that. Is it a little bit weird for you, like watching him in high school and now he's coming to you for advice? Was there any, like, I wouldn't say hesitation, but is there any moments where you're just like, I can't believe this guy's asking me and how do I sort of go about giving advice? Yeah, you know, it's weird. I, I keep saying high school. It was out of high school. It was maybe two years after high school I, when I actually was watching him in K1 and, and Pride and stuff. But it is it is weird, you know, and uh, to have went on to have a career and, and be done and, and be training Mark Hunt. And when he first came in and... He's a student of the game, right? Mm -hmm. So he was full board, tell me what to do and let's do it. I want to train here, I want the curriculum, you know, whatever. So I'm pushing him and it, the first few times, you know, you're like, okay, Mark, get over here, let's do this. Mm -hmm. One more set of this. I was like looking at my buddy Adrian, who's a gym manager, I'm just like, man, am I just telling Mark Hunt what to do? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like kind of scared to do that, right? <laughs> it's so weird because, but it's, it's what needed to happen. You know, you have to push him and like you push everyone, you know, and, and it was only fair to him that I did so. and. You know, it's just like training anyone else. He, he's a total humble student of the game, and, and he took training like a champ. And he is just the perfect guy to have represent your gym and represent your training and all the guys that's trained with him before, all his great training partners from the, before, because when he's in shape and he's ready, he's going to make everyone look good. I mean, he, he's that guy. He's a warrior, and, and that's all he needs is to get in shape and be motivated. Well, the first fight, arguably one of the greatest heavyweight fights, in you know UFC history, him and Bigfoot. Now Bigfoot's off the TRT. He's a little bit different. Well, how are you expecting this one to play out? Because a lot of people are saying this won't be the same fight. Other people are saying, hey, this could be part two of what was an extremely crazy fight. Yeah, you know what? I, I mean, I've watched that fight so many times because I, I watched it getting so ready for that fight, and then now watching it for uh, for Mark. Um, and it's just, in my personal opinion, from being there with him every day through camp from the beginning till now, mm -hmm. I don't see the fight lasting very long. I don't think that Silva's going to be able to take what Mark's going to dish out. And I think another difference is Mark is in such good shape now mm -hmm. that, that he's going to be dishing out a lot more than he did the first time. I mean, I think it's going to be a steady pressure. And his, man, his right hand. I mean, he's putting people down with big 16-ounce gloves on mm -hmm. that are bulimous, you know, at our gym <laughs> every day. So it's like... He hits so hard. And, and, Have you and had to spar him before? No, no. I tried to take him to down feel one it, time. Yeah. And then he just forgot I was holding on to his leg and just kept walking and I was just hanging <laughs> on. But he, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's just in phenomenal shape and it's so good to see because he's happy. You, you can just see this. From the time I first saw him when he came to AK until now, I think he shed like 20 kilos. You know, he's, he smiles. He's confident. He's got this glow about him. And when he's sparring, you can see it. He's confident, you know. He he knows he knows he can go. He knows that from the guys that we're putting in on him so much in, in one round, there, there's not nothing Silva's gonna be able to do to compare to that, you know, mm -hmm. like to to add that kind of pressure or to keep that kind of intensity or cardio. So I think the fight's just gonna slowly be going downhill for for Silva. I mean, he's in his forties. He's had some big wins. He's had some tough losses. What do you think if this fight goes to plan? Do you see another title run? For Mark Hunt, obviously the heavyweight division has shown that it only takes a couple of fights to get back up there and he might have unfinished business with Verdum. With Verdum. If you sort of feel it out, in your, in your opinion, do you think he has one more title run with, in him for the UFC? I honestly do, you know, and I know he's older and I know he's, he's, he's had a long career and um, all the factors that people are counting him out for, but man, he has that, that power and that, that hand, you know, and both hands, but that right hand especially. And, you know, with the way he's moving now, with, with the shape that he's in and, and how he's been looking these last few weeks, man, I do, because all it takes is one hit. He's just got to find that opening. That's it. And he can take an enormous amount of punishment to get there. So, I mean, he can take punch for punch if he has to to get there. But when he does get to that sweet spot, it's over. I think it's over for anyone. So, yeah, I, I definitely do.
Just quickly, Mike, before we let you go, obviously your good friend and uh, former training partner, Cain Velasquez, is here in town as well. We never got to ask you in regards to his you know, d- disappointing loss against Verdum. Do you think that it was partially due to you know, the, the elevation, or the cardio, and the ring rust? What, what is your take on that fight? Um, I've never seen him like that, you know. Um, he, he's the king of cardio at our gym, always has been. Um, it has to be some factor. And, and I, I'm not one to make excuses for people, but I, I would have to say it was that because he, he's just so good at, at, at keeping his cardio and composure and pressure. And I've never seen him in that situation before. I was, I was so shocked. Like, that was the most shocked I've ever been watching a fight, especially, <laughs> you know, an AKA guy because that's so unlike him to get tired like that. So I definitely think that's a factor. And I think if they fought anywhere else in the world where it was more even, it would be a totally different situation, a totally different outcome. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna grab a couple of predictions from you. Uh, we'll grab three. The first one, Mark Hunt versus Bigfoot Silver. How do, you, how do you predict this one finishing? I predict that Mark Hunt's gonna win by knockout TKO in the first. And now let's move on to Cain Velasquez, Fabrizio Vadum. Looks like they'll be rematching each other. How do you think this one goes? I think Cain wins, you know. Um, I, I think Cain's going it, to... It could go a, a few rounds. Um, I, I can see that happening, but I definitely think Cain's going to win. He's going to finish him TKO too. And finally, the big one, UFC 194, Luke Rockhold. Yep. How do you see this one going, Luke Rockhold versus Chris Weidman? I'm going with Luke. You know, I love, I love Weidman too. He's a great guy, a great ambassador, is a great champion. Um, but training with Luke for so long and like seeing how Luke has evolved and, and where he's at, he's on a whole nother level. And, and the funny thing is, is like you can watch his fights and you can see how good he is, but not really. Like he's on a whole different level than what people think as far as his ground game and his just overall game is, is phenomenal. And I, I think he's yet to, to show his full potential. And I think that fight's going to do it. Well, guys, if you're looking to lose some weight and enjoy a state-of-the-art gym, go visit Mike Swick and experience AK Thailand. You can go to akthailand.com for more info. And, of course, follow Mike on Twitter, at Official Swick. Mike, it's a pleasure having you here. Enjoy UFC 193 and good luck over the weekend, man. Thank you. And also check out my Facebook at uh, Facebook forward slash Mike Swick. We're doing a lot of live broadcasts. You can actually see some of the live broadcasts we did with Mark Hunt training. So you can see his aerodyne routine and some of the training we did around the gym. Um, We were trying to do live broadcasts every day or every other day. So and fights as well. So, so definitely check that out.